Let's start the show with a book, Making Hay, the authorised David Hay story by Elliot Wurzel. Now, this is a rare book, a genuine insider's tale of life, and I mean life, surrounding David Hay. Elliot has been part of David Hay's team, or entourage, for about eight years. He's graduated via Hay's hectic life to trusted friend. Okay, now the book reflects the 24-7 access it, that this guy had, that Elliot's had, and his fight after fight after fight life alongside David and Adam Booth. Now, I spoke to Elliot earlier, and I started by asking him, when did he realise that he had a book? I think I was always planning to do a book or some kind of... I was always planning to write my story of the time that I spent with David Hay. Um, whether it was going to be turned into a big, high-profile, you know, um, big-selling book or whether it was just going to remain uh, sort of a, a pamphlet you know, on my computer, it was, that was all dependent on how well David did. And how long you stayed with him. That's it. It was, it was all dependent on how well David did and how big a name he became. And um, I think the moment I realised that it was, you know, a proposition that I could take to a publisher and, and get a book deal was, was around the time of the Nikolai Valua fight because um, obviously he won that fight and his profile went through the roof both before and after the fight. Um, he became more than just a boxer, more than just a guy that I could talk about to a few select friends who knew boxing, you know, he became almost a celebrity. And um, I think once that happened, it then became, you know, a realistic uh, proposition in my mind to, to actually take that book, take all those years of making notes. Had you um, been making notes? Yeah, I've been, I've been making notes. Um, serious notes or just like the occasional jot? You yeah, know? the occasional jot. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it wasn't too serious. I wasn't... But they were like triggers as yeah, such. That's yeah, that's it. Just, just, little, uh, just little notes here and there. Um, I mean, uh, because... Because I was only 16, 17 when I first met him, everything that happened after that point stuck in my memory anyway because it was, such a, it was such an unusual relationship. I mean, David always asked me, you know, how did you remember this conversation or this mundane situation? How did you remember it all these years later? And I explained to him, you know, back, back then it may not have meant a great deal to you, but as a kid growing up it was yeah, with this boxer, yeah. I mean, I, I remember every tiny little detail, every cafe we went to, um, every conversation we had, you know, over dinner or in the lead up to a fight and you know w when I'm the only person that's allowed the kind of access I get before a fight you know with him in a hotel yeah. room I pick up everything you know I pick up every little bit of food he eats everything he watches on TV everything he says because it's it's all magnified at that point it's also you know it's so important before a fight to all those kind of tiny moments so what fight did you come in Elliot I mean not just as you know what what, what fight were you sort of I integral part of the team part of uh you know, team haymaker or um, hay team or whatever. Well, I've always, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it sounds crazy, but Adam and David have always seemed to value what I say, you know, as a, as a boxing fan, as someone who follows the sport and also follows David's career. Mm. You know, I like to think that I know David and his kind of um, idiosyncrasies better than probably anyone mm. other than Adam. You know, I know his mannerisms both in and out of the ring. And, and aside from that, I am a boxing fan. You know, I'm obsessed by the sport. Um, I, you know, I follow not just David, but any any boxing action on every weekend, and and you know David has he has a lot of people around him, but not a lot of boxing fans, not a lot of people who really follow the sport and can can sort of pique his interest the way that I could. So that allowed me a nice little inroad. But when you came in, there weren't that many around, were there? No, such. I mean, not at you know, all. compared to the swollen entourage oh, that we saw in Hamburg for the, la for the yeah. last fight, the Klitschko fight, and it, you know that was growing. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, if you were around two or three years ago, it was you know it was far yeah. smaller. Even even Tiny club. with the, uh, the the win over Jean-Marc Mormack in 2007. Yeah, sure. I mean, he went out there on his own. He maybe had, let's say, a dozen family and friends with him that made the trip out to Paris, and that would have been it. And you know, to me, that's why that's such a special win. Um, you know, well, a it's, a good, it's a great boxing it's, win it's as well as great, great memories. Yeah. Exactly, um, but you know, a lot of people pinpoint, let's say, the Nikolai Valuev fight as a you know a big moment in his career, and, and it was. But mm. by that stage, um, that like you said, there were so many people around him. It, it, it's not that kind of you know, it's not that personal moment that the Mormek one was. Well, but the, were you? Um, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic. It's a, it is a it is a fantastic book, Making Hay, the authorized David Hay story. And in fact, Boxing Monthly have, uh, have, got, have put a good line on it. They said it's a far cry from a PR exercise, even yeah. though you worked, you know, with inside the camera, the sort of mm -hmm. PR guy, because it's not that. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and was there was there. Were, were there points? I mean, let's 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 deal with the entourage a little bit because I, it concerned me slightly, and I wrote about it in the yeah. build-up to 
the the last fight, the, the Hamburg fight, uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't a case of yes men. It was like agitators, and there was all sorts of. I mean, I yeah. saw you in the hotel two or three days before mm -hmm. the fight. They're almost like camps. There mm -hmm. was this camp mm -hmm. of old old friends. Yeah. Then there was this camp of sort of new friends, but okay friends. Then there was this camp of sort of new friends, but not really inside. It's certainly not in with the others. Yeah. And then there was say you and Adam. Yeah. I mean, w were you aware of that, or were you just too focused uh, was, and close to, to, to David? I was completely aware of that. And to be honest, you're the first person that's actually brought that up to me, and it's. Mm. It's quite interesting that you spotted that, you know, having, I mean, you've been, you've I've seen David for a long, for time, Brad, yeah, long know, time, yeah, over the years, so it's quite interesting that you spotted that, um, and it was very true, there were little groups, cliques, yeah, yeah and, uh, and, all, all, and all trying to score points, yeah, to be e honest everyone, with you, all trying to get every, that moment, everyone's there for a reason, and, you know, it's, and it's not just David, it's, it's of course. you know, that would happen yeah. for any athlete, and, and that, that's the thing, you know, success in a sport opens doors for you, you know, opens doors for you in your own sport, but it also opens doors, you know, in other places. And, and there's always and people willing to try and open it, a door. That's <laughs> it. And, and you know what David's like, and it, his brain's a very kind of busy place, and, <laughs> and, uh, and boxing, you know, it takes up one, <laughs> one small compartment of that brain, but there's a lot of other compartments, and there's a lot of other things that he wants to do in life, and, and this success <laughs> has, has and, kind of opened his and eyes. madly and sometimes sadly tries to do them all at the same that's time. It. I'm thinking about the Haymaker magazine, that's which it. is a brilliant, if you've never if you've never seen this copy of this Haymaker magazine, you can buy it on probably still online. It was a brilliant idea, but here's the problem. David decides to do it before one of the fights. It's a massive magazine. I don't know how many words you put into the, no, to the editions, I, I write, but they're, they're like the books. Yeah. But, but to, to tell us about that, tell us about that that came out, because he did the work on that, didn't he, as well? Let's get that right. Yeah. It wasn't something you went no, and did in no, isolation. No, no. No, he He's wouldn't. edited it before fights, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. He wouldn't let anyone take that out of his hands. That was his baby, <laughs> and... And the way he he explains it to you know to me or to Adam or to anyone is that you know he needs a distraction before a fight, mm. and he needs a distraction that's going to be productive and um, you know safe. Yeah, and, and, a, yeah, yeah. As opposed to the bad. The that's bad it. Distraction. Yeah, and it, and it is. It's it's a good distraction in that sense. Um, but at the same time, you know, thinking as a, as a human being, putting myself in his shoes, the last thing I would want to be doing before a, a mass, you know, a massive fight. We're yeah. talking about world title fights, not little four rounders at York Hall. Yeah, cool. The last thing I'd want to be doing before one of those, you know, in between training sessions, is you know, wasting my energy doing a photo shoot like, yeah. or something, man. You know, and it's, and it's then editing, thing. and and it's a big thing. And he's arranging big interviews with big celebrities. Yeah, big celebrities. I mean, it's and he's getting involved in the uh, <laughs> in the in the hard work of it all, and it's um. It's quite, you know, it does show what an incredible guy is in that sense because there's not many other boxers that would put no. that energy into doing something. You know, whether you think it's right or wrong, I do kind of sit back and I admire him because, you know, it's, it's a big feat that well, he we, achieves. You know, and as I say, if you've not seen this, this, this magazine called How You Make or Quarterly, I'm not sure if we call it a magazine, whatever we call it, bookzine <laughs> or whatever. If you've not seen it, yeah, distraction is what you That's call it. Uh, it. But, you know, it had massive names from British sport and British entertainment, mm, you mm. know, inside. In, inside the mag. So